Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and in this video I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Luminar stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Luminar develops laser sensors that enable autonomous driving. The technology it uses is called LiDAR. LiDAR stands for Light Detection and Ranging. It is a remote sensing method that uses light in the form of a pulsed laser. LiDAR determines the distance between itself and an object by monitoring how long it takes a pulse of light to bounce back. The company has extensively tested its technology to ensure safety even in the most challenging conditions. Its full stack Sentinel technology will help this company grow and be the go-to for LiDAR and autonomous driving. The total addressable market is expected to be $150 billion by 2030. It operates in two segments, autonomy solutions and component sales. Most of its revenue is from autonomy solutions. This segment designs, manufactures, and sells LiDAR sensors and software to car manufacturers. The component sales segment designs and tests non-standard integrated circuits for government agencies and defense contractors. Luminar software is expected to be part of Volvo's next generation electric SUV. It was recently awarded its 100th patent. Patents can be a very valuable asset as they can be monetized when they're licensed out to other companies. The recent acquisition of Optigration will help the company secure a key part of the supply chain and increase the company's value and importance in the autonomous auto industry. Tesla's technology for autonomous cars does not use LiDAR, but if Luminar can prove LiDAR's superiority with autonomous vehicles, then Tesla may one day be Luminar's customer, like Volvo is. According to Elon Musk, Tesla does not use LiDAR because it's expensive, redundant, and unreliable. Tesla's cameras and its computer can reconstruct a 3D worldview around a Tesla vehicle, which makes LiDAR non-essential. Luminar raised $590 million when it was acquired by a SPAC called Gore's Metropolis. A special purpose acquisition company is formed to raise money through an IPO, then acquire an active business. This stock is backed by some big names like Peter Thiel, GoPro founder Nick Woodman, Volvo, and Vecto IQ, the firm that helped Nikola Corp go public. Two other SPACs are linking up with LiDAR companies. Collective Growth acquired Innoviz, Interprivate acquired Ava. This company started in 2012 and is headquartered in Orlando, Florida. Its stock can be found on the NASDAQ and Mexican Bolsa. Let's get started with the model. This is a mid-cap company, 6.2 billion market cap. They're trading at 17.28 a share and they have 359 million shares outstanding. Let's look at their financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So they do have negative free cash flow each year since they still have pretty low revenue. Net income is the profit or loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses, which of course is negative as well. Revenue is the sales for the company and that's pretty low, 18 million in the trailing 12 months. This is their income statement. The top line is the revenue, the sales. The company recently raised its revenue forecast for 2021. Originally it was 25 to 30 million. They raised it to 30 to 33 million. Here's a breakdown of their first six months of revenue in 2021 versus 2020. 57% of their revenue comes from North America. 39% is from Europe and the Middle East. 87% of its revenue is from autonomy solutions. These are sales to car manufacturers and 13% from component parts. Below revenue is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. Revenue minus cost of revenue gives you your gross profit, which is negative each year. Below that is operating expenses. About half is from payroll and half from research and development. They pay about 2.4 million of interest on their debt. They don't have too much debt on their balance sheet. And of course they have negative net income every year. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company loses from its operational business. Then you have capital expenditures, which are investments in property, plant, and equipment. They have pretty low sales at this point, but once they get more customers and more demand for their products, their capex should go up a lot because they're gonna to have to start building factories and infrastructure to start manufacturing their products. Operating cash flow minus capex give you your free cash flow. 
and it's negative every year. So they need money from somewhere to fund their operations. They raised 69 million in 2019 and 184 million in 2020. They recently raised over half a billion from the reverse merger. Usually a company in growth mode that doesn't have positive free cash flow doesn't use debt to fund their operations. This is the equity section of their balance sheet. They have 547 million of equity. They raised $1.2 billion from issuing stock and they lost $700 million from running their business. Let's look at the capital structure, 547 million of equity, 14 million of debt. They're 98% equity, 2% debt. And you can see they have a lot of cash on that balance sheet and their weighted average cost of capital is 8.5% and that's a discount rate we're gonna to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated seven years of future free cash flows. We also estimated the terminal value, which is all cash flows past year seven, that's $9.8 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $6.2 billion. We divide that by 359 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $17.28. I wasn't able to value this company. I used all my models and all of them said the company was really overvalued. So I'm just showing you what their future free cash flows would need to be to justify their current stock price. So if they have 576 million of free cash flow by 2027, the average company converts about 10% of their revenue to free cash flow. So that's about $5.8 billion of revenue. Do you think they can get $5.8 billion of revenue by 2027? If you do, you should buy the stock. If you don't, maybe you shouldn't buy the stock. But you may be investing in this company for the volatility of the stock. If you're doing that, then fundamentals don't matter. Simply, Wall Street values the company at $20 a share. They're saying it's 15% undervalued. Five analysts priced this stock and the average price target was $30. This is where the stock has been trading since the beginning of 2019. This is when it was a SPAC, so it was pretty flat for a while. Then the company announced it was gonna acquire Luminar and it shot way up over $40 a share. But it's regressed since then. This is where the stock has been trading the past year. So you can see it was a SPAC at this point. It was pretty low. Then when the company announced Luminar, it shot way up. Look at all this buying activity. And then there was a big sell-off. You can see in the red, there was a lot of selling activity and the stock went way down. Then it's been up and down, up and down. But pretty much since this peak, it's gone down in a straight line. The problem is, will it come down further, down to 15, 14? Or will it start going back up again? No one really knows when the bottom is. I think it will start going up. And who would really want to buy the stock at 17 if it goes to single digits? You'd be pissed off. You may be wondering, how can there be so much buying activity and so much selling activity? Isn't it always equal? There's always a buyer and a seller. That's true. When a trade executes, there's always a buyer and a seller. The moment there are more sellers than buyers, prices will begin to drop because essentially there is more supply than demand. A stock's price cannot move higher if there's more selling volume than buying volume. If you wanted to buy Luminar and you put in a market order, the trade would execute right away. What if you put an order to buy the stock at $16? No one would sell it to you for $16 because lots of people are looking to buy it for $17. Right now, $17.28. So your buy order would just sit out there. And the more buy orders that sit out there, the better the stock will do. And the more sell orders that sit out there, the worse the stock will do. Just because a buy order or a sell order is submitted doesn't mean there's somebody on the other side that's willing to take the action. I can't sell my Luminar stock for $18, $19. No one's going to buy it unless the price goes up to $18, $19 in the market. But right now at $17.28, no one will buy it. The stock's low point was $10 when it was a SPAC, but it hit $48 at its peak. The stock is trading below its 50 day and 200 day moving average. Two to four million shares are traded each day on this stock. There are 359 million shares outstanding. 32% of the shares are held by institutions and it has a pretty high short percentage. Over 9% of the shares on float are shorted. Analysts are really bullish on this stock projecting their earnings to grow 53%, their revenue to grow 71%. If you were crazy enough to put $10,000 into the company when it was a SPAC, you'd have $17,000 today. The biggest shareholder is the CEO of the company, Austin Russell. He's 26 years old now, and he's worth well over $1 billion. Then GVA Capital, the Vanguard Group, G2VP, and last is the Monetary Authority of Singapore. Let's look at their financial ratios. We can't look at the PE because they have negative net income. They have a terrible price to sales ratio since they have hardly any revenue. 
And their price to book isn't so great either. The only reason it's decent is because they just raised all that money from the reverse merger. They have a ton of cash on their balance sheet, $580 million. So they have a really high current ratio and quick ratio. And they're really well funded. They can acquire another business or keep investing back into their company to grow it and refine their technology. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to companies in the same industry. I've done videos of 33 companies in the same industry as Luminar. And this company has pretty bad numbers, mainly because they don't have much revenue at this point. So they are low in debt, which is pretty common for startups and companies that don't bring in a lot of cash flow. And they have a high current ratio, but their other numbers are pretty bad. So to summarize, this company seems to have a really good technology, but it hasn't been proven yet. Plus, not only do they need great technology, they need to scale it on a really high level because auto manufacturers are going to order lots and lots of parts from them. And that's what they need, the relationships with auto manufacturers and a really good manufacturing process. If that turns out well, you can easily make 10 or 20x on your investment. But who knows if that will work out and how long that will take. So it seems like a really exciting stock. I'm looking forward to seeing how this develops. I rank their free cash flows, revenue, and ratios 1 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.